Hey, what's up everyone? Just want to do a short little recap of the Bighorn race. It's hard to believe that a week ago I was actually on the mountain, but um been thinking about it and some people asked, hey Seth, when are you going to do your recap? So here, here it is. Uh, first, just have to give a shout out to my team. Um, I couldn't have done it without them. Obviously the captain, Stephanie, um, she rocked it as always. Um, she, uh, it was our wedding anniversary, so she was a little fired up that that's how she had to spend it. But, you know, I told her just, you know, stay calm, stay positive and solve problems. And she, uh, she did that. And then we also had Sue Ellen and Rika, they were helping the crew. And then my dad, Hot Rod, he was, um, driving Stephanie around, which is a big task. And then also he actually failed on his primary responsibility and that was to have an ice cold bush light at the finish line and I had to walk to the truck to get that so need to work on him but no it was awesome having him there um and then my pacers uh Cody uh kind of getting into his first trail run uh Byron uh was with me for like 36 miles and then uh Jake get me over the finish line so fortunate to have such a awesome crew those those three guys there, they're savages, and um, they, they helped me allow, get over the course. But um, the Bighorn, if you don't know what it is, 100 miles in the Bighorn Mountains. It's an outback course, about 20,000 feet of elevation gain. Um, I finished 77th out of 191 finishers, and um, there's about 270 that started. So, uh, you know, if it took me... 30 hours and 11 minutes to finish. My goal was 28 hours was kind of where I wanted to be, but um, it is what it is. Obviously the first goal is always to finish and I, I got it done. So proud of that. Uh, I get the question, you know, was it what I expected? Um, you know, reading about the race, you'll, you'll read two things. Number one, how beautiful the course is and how muddy it is. And uh, the beauty exceeded my expectations. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's been raining, so everything was green. Um, the wildflowers were, were beautiful. It was just it, one of the most beautiful places I've been. Um, and to be able to see it on my feet is pretty cool. And then the mud, they didn't lie about that either. It was muddy. But learn, you know, early on, embrace it. Uh, they'd been getting rain pretty much all week prior to it. Um, but we had good weather when we started. It was nice and cool. So that so that was good. But embrace the mud. Um, as far as like the elevation, uh, you know, here in Nebraska, I can't really get much training for it. Um, you know, it, I spent enough time in the mountains. I knew what it was going to be like. Um, if I had one thing to do over, I would go do more training, you know, in the mountains just to get more of that, that type of elevation gain and descent. But, um, I thought I was ready for it. Um, I never got to a point where it's like, oh my gosh, what I get into. So pretty ha happy where I was there. Um, first part of the race went about as planned. Um, the, you, you, you go up this big ascent and you kind of get in a Congo line and, you know, I kept telling myself, patience, patience, don't get in the race, but it's hard because you're like looking up this mountain and you can see a hundred people in front of you, but then you look back and you can see a hundred people behind you. So you're kind of like, all right, I'm probably about right where I, I need to be, but got on the first aid station, feeling good, um, left that aid station, and, you know, the next part is kind of a rolling descent, and um, I felt good. I was picking up some time. I might have pushed it a little bit too hard that section. I actually passed a girl, and she's like, oh, yeah, you can go around me. I'm trying to, I don't want to blow out my quads before Jaws, and I was like, oh, that might be a good idea, so I did kind of back up just you know take take it down a notch um and you know to to finish out that that final descent in there um but at sally's picked up byron we started up the mountain um that's the long climb known as jaws it's 18 miles i think 5,000 of gain it's just kind of a steady upward for a really long time um my stomach started getting a little sick i did throw up outside of one of the aid stations there um but kept moving i was still running downhills at that point in time um, and, uh, got to Jaws. It was dark when I got to Jaws and that aid station is quite the place. It's, um, it's just kind of chaotic. You're in a tent. It's dark. I mean, people are looking rough. You're don't want to be in your, in my mind, I'm like, I want in and out, right? I don't want to spend a bunch of time, get comfortable. So got out of there, um, changed, you know, changed my socks. It was completely muddy up at the top. It's like you're running through mud puddles halfway up to your knee. It's kind of crazy, but got back, went down. Um, on the descent, I thought I would be running more. You know, you're like, man, this it's uphill for 18 miles. You're like, you're going to smoke it down. 
but I, I, I don't know. I think I was getting tired. Um, it was dark. I was losing a little bit of confidence in, in my uh, legs and where I was stepping. So I, th I think the descent, I didn't go quite as fast as I thought I would. Um, and then towards the end, I was not feeling real good. Um, got to Sally's, uh, that next aid station at the bottom and I was at a pretty low spot. I, I was real hot. I, I don't know if I was, my body kind of had a fever or what it was. Um, I knew I had a big climb out of that Canyon. Um, but I picked up Cody, we started making some progress and eventually the sun came up, started feeling good and, um, you know, started running some more. So cleared that section, got back to dry fork, um, surprised the crew. They didn't think we would be there yet, but got there and picked up Jake and for the last final 17 miles. And, um, I was doing pretty good at the beginning. Uh, there's still one more big climb, got up that, and then it's pretty much all downhill, but you're basically coming off this pretty steep mountain and my quads were smoked and my legs were smoked and I was not moving fast downhill and uh, eventually worked my way down to the bottom there's another aid station i mentioned jake i was feeling a little dizzy and it's like do you want to sit down i'm like no and then go around a corner and i was like let's just keep going and we go around the corner and there's a there's a log bridge <laughs> that i got across over this creek i'm like oh, probably not great when i'm dizzy but um got got across it and out of the canyon and on the road for the last five miles and you know by that time it was all walking and I was in rough shape. I was grumpy, but you know, I kept telling myself, I was like, Seth, this is what you signed up for. You trained for it. Just put in the work, get it done. And so the last five minutes, it's all on a service road, but finally made it into town and got to see my dad at the finish line, which is pretty awesome. And Stephanie as well. And so, um, got, got it done. Um, you know, my favorite part, there's so many good memories, um, but you know, those last five miles, right? The, that grinding and really looking deep and finding out what you're made of, like that's why you do those races. And then finally wrapping that up with getting to see my dad and, and my wife at the finish line and the rest of my team. I mean, I, nothing gets better than that. Um, what did I learn from the race? Um, you know, I, I need to work on my descents and I don't know what that looks like, but I just feel like that was one of my weaknesses of the race. Um, otherwise, you know, when it comes to mud, just embrace it, <laughs> move through it. Don't try to tiptoe around it. Uh, patience. Everyone tells you that in a hundred mile race, like be patient and you're like, okay. And then you get in the race and you're like, oh man, you get going, but really you do need to be, be patient. Um, also nutrition. I mean, and that's just one of the things you can just, it's hard to, know what your stomach is going to feel like at 60 miles without running 60 miles. Um, but always, you know, an area to go there. Um, so that's kind of what I learned, uh, about racing. As far as life, I always like the life lessons. And, you know, I, I said this in an earlier post, but you know, when I went in this race, I had the mindset, you know, you're going to run hundred miles or you're not make up your mind, figure it out. Right. Do or don't. There is no try. Yoda said that. Um, and, and, and that mindset's still important, but I, I shared a quote from Louis Lamour and, um, I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but you know, too many people talk about the miles they travel and not the stuff that they've seen that day. And I think runners are real guilty of that, right? You, you, I mean, everything's about how many miles we run and, and it's just important to kind of enjoy, enjoy the journey. And uh, I think about the stuff that I saw during race day, just the, the beauty of those mountains and to see them in a way that most people aren't willing to, to do it. I mean, not talking trash to anyone, but it's the reality of it. It's just awesome that I, I get to see that firsthand when I'm really super tired. And then, you know, the emotional aspects of seeing my wife on our anniversary at, you know, Sally's footbridge at 3.30, 4 in the morning and kissing her for the first time on the one at year anniversary. That's awesome. Getting to see my dad at the finish line. Um, you know, the man that wouldn't ever let me quit anything. Um, it's pretty, pretty special as well. And then all the stuff you get to see, you know, deep down in here, you go to some dark places in a race of that length. And so to come out of it and know that you're mentally strong enough to overcome those point, those low spots, uh, mean, means a lot to me. So, um, that's yeah you know what i learned is just enjoy the journey it doesn't always have to be black and white goals uh just enjoy the time with your friends so a uh, tip for someone that wants to run a hundred mile race or i guess any race out of their comfort zone um you know a lot of people say i can't imagine running a hundred miles i'm like no kidding i couldn't imagine running a hundred miles uh you know seven eight years ago um you know i i kind of learned about hundred mile races i knew jake was running them but i didn't understand them and then cameron haynes kind of 
saw it and he had a picture of his belt buckle, 100 mile belt buckle. I was like, I want one of those belt buckles. And, um, you know, started off with like six mile race. I'm like, there's no way I can run a hundred. And, and then I signed up for, you know, a half marathon. I was like, there's no way I can run a hundred. And then I ran a marathon and, you know, almost died. And I was like, there's no way I can run a hundred. And then eventually I signed up for a 50 mile race and I finished and I was like, well, I'm halfway, but still standing maybe. Right. And then I did the salt and sea and that was 81 miles. And I was like, do I have 19 more of me? I'm like, I think I do. I think I can run a hundred. And so the point is, is that you don't go from couch to a hundred. There's a process and as long as you keep setting goals and trying to do a little bit more, a little bit more, eventually you'll, you'll accomplish big things. So that's my tip. But my final concluder, um, just, man, surround yourself with people that you want to be around. You know, but probably my other favorite part of this was just the time we had um, my team uh, and the stories they told. Listen to stories of Rod and Stephanie driving around the mountains trying to find, spy, the, find, find the different aid stations is pretty awesome. So uh, surround yourself with successful people and enjoy the time with them. But uh, last thing real quick, got to show this. Big horn belt buckle on a Groff belt. My new day-to-day -day belt. Come on, man. Doesn't get much better than that. Thanks for all the support, everybody.